Good Saturday weekend morning to you, everybody. It's Mike at digitalnomad.net. We're gonna step in here to Elvis Presley Boulevard to do some much needed annual maintenance on my or your Tesla. All right, here it is. All Teslas have a similar design. I'm gonna tell you about it. All right, basically, if you know about Tesla design, you know that they all kind of look sort of the same. They all have this swept back look to them, a reverse teardrop, and because of this design and the super efficient, actually reduced frontal area, they don't have a rate an upright radiator like a car usually does. So instead of the radiator kind of going up and down like on an internal combustion engine, and the usually the air conditioning condenser right behind that, for easy cleaning, because all you gotta do is open up and just flush a run a hose from behind. They don't have that. They don't have anything in this area. Actually, that's uh, anything like that. But they still have those components, the radiator and the condenser, which is actually considered one because you have to cool your battery pack here in your Tesla. All right. Uh, they're actually underneath the car, flat above the front wheels and very hard to get to, very hard to clean. It used to be part of Tesla service manual that you would do annual maintenance on this which means you would take apart the whole frunk you go down inside and you get a vacuum be very careful not to damage the electrical the fins the aluminum fins and uh it was part of the annual service and then tesla decided that they don't want any required annual service on their cars so they got rid of that but believe me you still need to do it you still have to do this once a year the reason why is because your air conditioning stops working as effectively if you don't get enough airflow across that coil across that radiator uh, across the condenser whatever you want to call it and because of that you have reduced capacity in your air conditioning cooling system which means when it's time to supercharge which people do all the time it's going to have to choose between your battery pack being cooled and your cabin being cooled because it won't be able to do both and it's going to shut you down on the hottest days of the year which was miserable what's happened to me actually is because tesla doesn't acknowledge this anymore as a maintenance item they have re they have replaced twice the compressor the air conditioning compressor in my car which has gotten progressively more expensive over the past two years this car is 250,000 miles on it already, or just about. It's almost six and a half years old. And only in the last two years has it given me problems, and I've supercharged the entire time. Okay? I mean, yes, it is black, so it absorbs a little bit more heat, but even more so. Uh, black used to be the standard color for Tesla. Now it's white, That's the one that you get for free. Uh, but regardless of that, you've got to do the maintenance for this. You've got to keep it, keep it clean. It has enough capacity from the factory, but when it clogs up with debris and it can't get enough airflow across those coils and like i said they're not here if it was right here you could just open this frunk or the hood and just flush it out with water from the back that's what everybody used to do old school and they didn't get that much debris in them because of the design but because everything's more aerodynamic and with battery electric vehicles you need that so you don't kill your range you need the best aerodynamics these parts are now hard to clean like i said you'll see i'm gonna have to take this whole frunk apart and I'm actually going to do a video uh, over here. I'm going to set up a camera on a tripod so you can watch a time lapse of the whole thing too. So we'll, there will actually be two videos. So look for that. I'll link, depending upon which video you're watching, uh, of course you're watching this one, I will link that other video below in the description. The very first link will be for the other video. Oh, another thing that's going to happen here if you don't do this maintenance once a year is your performance is going to be, re is going to be reduced. And what I mean by that is that... Uh, your battery pack cooling on the hottest days or when you're flooring it going up mountain roads and stuff is going to start to overheat. It won't be able to cool itself down. You'll see the little hash marks come over in your display and it will limit the amount of throttle push, not throttle, but accelerator pedal push down that will have any effect on your acceleration, meaning it'll limit your top end acceleration. Now, people who are in the performance uh, of Teslas and putting them on the tracks, some have put in like secondary radiators that supposedly provide like six times the cooling capacity but what they've done is they've taken this whole frunk that you have up here for storage and they've removed it and they've replaced it with a radiator so the reason they've done this design which is a pain in the ass to clean is because it's laying flattened down and you still have this whole frunk and any other design is going to give you like significant increases in cooling capacity for your battery pack for performance driving and things like that is going to destroy or eliminate your frunk storage space. So just uh, keep that in mind if you're wondering why Tesla did something like this. Setting my camera up here so I can 
have a bird's eye view of what I'm going to do Oops, for the, uh, for the time lapse. All right, so let's get to work. Get to work. Okay, I'm ready to go. I'm going to get the time lapse going. It's on. All right, you'll see my mess of a frunk in here. I gotta clean this stuff out. Ooh. Once you've got everything out, I've got a mat. Basically the idea is you're gonna pull this off, which comes off, and I've got a video just on this. I'm not gonna go into too much detail. You pull this off, you pull, up, you pull this mat out, uh, you pull this liner out, uh, and you will have screws behind here. You can pull these plastic covers off as well. And basically everything comes apart from there. Don't forget on this part, you've got little lights. You've got to you know, pop the lights out because they're wired in. Otherwise, you'll find that you're attached by wires and then you know, feed them through like this. Both of them, both sides. And it takes a little finesse to just, especially when you're holding a camera with one hand, but you, you get the idea. Just in case you've never noticed before or thought about it, if you get stuck in here, there is an emergency release button. I think this is it. Yeah, that's it. And that's the first responder cutoff loop to cut all power to the main battery pack in case of an emergency by first responders. Now we have to get all these bolts off is what we need to do. There's quite a few of them, so loosen them all. Don't lose any of them. And take this plastic part out, tub. Turns out they're all 10 millimeters. Get to work. All right, all the bolts are out. Don't lose any of them. Time to take the whole tub out. Before you take the tub out, again, these lights, they have to be fed through here so that you don't break off the wires when you pull the tub out. Let's see. Yeah. Just make sure, just keep an eye on them while you're pulling this thing out. Yeah. Now that it's out, let me give you a little uh, anatomy lesson. This is your HEPA filter. This is on Model X. I have Model X. Only on Model S, sorry, only on all Model Xs will have this frame. They may not have the filter in it, but you can always buy it from Tesla. It's expensive, like $100. Worth it, in my opinion. It filters out all the stuff coming in. It's your air intake, basically. Uh, some Model Ss that are newer, all the newer ones, but the older ones don't have this. And also your fuses are here to so see, you know, your 12-volt battery for all Model Xs is right here. Uh, if it's three or Y, it's a similar location. If it's a newer Model S, I think it might be over there. If it's an older Model S, it's much harder to get to. That's 12 volt, it goes bad every, I just replace it every three or four years. The light will come on, the warning light uh, inside and tell you, which is awesome because on older cars or other, any other car with a 12 volt battery, it doesn't tell you that. That's only your 12 volt, it's not your high voltage. High voltage is between the uh, tires on the floor pan. This is what we want. It's covered with an air shroud. So let's take this off. This whole assembly actually just pops out, I think. It doesn't, yeah, they, nothing special. And when you pull it out, you see it's kind of dirty, but change it every 100,000 miles, I'd say. Battery, this is going to need to be changed out. I've changed mine twice already, I think. Already. You can hear my, my battery pack is charging. Ooh, that's weird. All right, well, we're going to get to hear these sounds because my main battery pack is charging at two miles per hour, very, very slow rate but it's still making sounds while it's charging. And I guess the HVAC is running. I think that's the compressor that was replaced twice on my car. So where is that thing? It's in here somewhere. This is the coolant for battery pack coolant, I think, and also HVAC. I think it's all together. That's probably either the compressor or the motor. I think it's the compressor. And then this is what we want. Now, in order to get to this area, uh, I believe there are some clips on the side there's some clips here, like there's like six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I think there's some clips on the side here too. Let me, let me investigate before I start 
yanking things out. I want to make sure you guys understand how this works so you understand why it needs to be clean. So basically this directs airflow. So you're going to have all your airflow coming in from here in the front. Most Teslas are bottom breathers and actually I'm missing the, uh, the shroud here, the kick plate, the whatever you call it here, uh, air dam thing. I'm going to replace that. But air, air flows through here. There's fans that help pull it through. On Model X also air flows through here and it goes down. It all gets directed below. It's bottom breathing and it pulls that air across, across these coils that you cannot see. <laughs> I'm glad you can hear it because you can kind of hear the process of what's going on. It's a very hot and humid summer day, even over in Northwest Pennsylvania. Uh, hot and humid for them is like 70 degrees right now and humid. <laughs> it's not even that bad. But let's figure out how to get this cover off because this cover needs to come off so that we can get a vacuum in there. And when we get the vacuum in the shop vac, we're gonna have to be very, very careful not to, um, damage any of the fins, scrape them, bend them, whatever. It finished that cooling cycle, the fans just shut off, so it's gotten a lot quieter now. Still, it didn't make too much noise, did it? And normally, like I said, you'd have, up right here, you'd, have, you'd see the fans pulling air uh, from the front of the car through the radiator and condenser, uh, and just to get that airflow across. You don't see that here because it's down low. Let's get the plastic off. Now, I'm not really seeing anything on the side here. There's gotta be something, but these clips here, I'm starting to pull it back. I'm just pulling it very carefully with my hand. You see, it's this one's locked into place. See, it? that's locked into place. I'm pulling this one. I'm just pulling the plastic up gently, and it should make clearance, and then you wanna get all six of these, kinda like that. Oh, that one popped back into place. You heard that. But I'm gonna need two hands, but you're gonna to need to pull back and, and kind of grab one and then grab the next and kind of go, go, go without it falling back into place and, and reattaching like that. And then eventually you're gonna to wanna to get some clearance and pry this back a little bit. Just a little bit, don't break it. And if there's any clips down here, you wanna be very careful. The only other way to get this thing completely off is to remove the front bumper apparently. I don't know how to do that or even want to get into that right now. And these are my tools, by the way. I always keep these in my trunk, all those. So, um, I know Tesla service loves me when I come in here, they have to take all this stuff out every time. So let's get to work, let's pull this back. What I'm finding the trick is with this, is since this is flexible and it's rubber, it's kind of rubber, rubbery plastic. Oops, that one popped back into place. But you push down here so it straightens it out and makes it longer. And then when you do that, these things flex, look, like this one, this one right here, when I push down in the middle, See how it gains all that? And then you can pull it back gently. Use some finesse, do that with each one, and you should be able to pull this thing back. Yeah. All right, you can see I've got two of them out now by using this process. This third one's gonna come out. Just make sure you, you, you keep tension here so you're not gonna lose this spot, these this areas that you've already made gains on to get the next one. You gotta keep kind of moving across. This, this third one was a little difficult, but I've got it. See, one, two, three, those are all loose and off. You can see these are still attached. I'm gonna to try to keep working my way across, get this one next. This tool right here is like a clip. It, it works for automotive doors and things. This is very helpful in getting this, la this one right here by kind of wedging it in there, being careful not to break anything and pulling up. And you see, I got that one. I got that, this is a tough one. Two more to go here. All right, I got them all. Look, this whole thing is loose now, you see? They're all intact, and you see there's not much play. There's not much um, upward motion here, unfortunately. And I wish I could take the whole front off, but I'm going to have to see how I can gain access in here. You want to kind of go through here with your vacuum to clean things out. Well, I'm finding that things are super tight in here and that this is blocking. I think that if this whole assembly wasn't in the way, that I could pull this back further and gain a lot better access. So I'm going to try to take it off. It looks like more 10 millimeter bolts uh, and then see if this assembly will come off as well. Turns out there are quite a few bolts, including this one right here. And you got it on both sides like that. You've got these over here. One was missing, I found. One, they put the wrong one in. Look, it's got this big flange. I'm gonna have a hard time getting it past that spring. Hopefully I can get it out. And then this whole assembly hopefully will come out. It's still not popping off here. And so now I'm gonna to try to take these off. Uh, maybe the whole assembly, the entire thing. Maybe I didn't have to take 
these four off. We'll see. Still not coming off, so I took these bolts off. See if that makes a difference. I can pull this assembly, at least lift it up somewhat. Just here from lifting this off, this is only on Model X like this. It's airflow. I'm seeing bugs. Uh, I'm seeing debris. I'm trying to lift them out so they don't go into the condenser. But there be, some of them were trapped here, but a lot of them went right through. Here's another one. And they are probably in that condenser area that we need to vacuum out. Very hard to get to, as you can see. All right, you can see what I did here. I just took some longer rope type material and went underneath here, being very careful not to break anything. Things, some things have kind of bent back a little bit, but this is a vise tied to a vise. It's holding this up for me. It's like an assistant with two hands. And you can see there's, it's tight access. Let me turn the light on for you. All right, here we are looking underneath, trying to get that light to turn on. It is tough. Uh, you can see there's two coils, two radiators. There's one here on top and there's one on bottom. So it's trying to double up the cooling capacity. The problem is you can't get much in between. And over here in between is where all the dirt is. Can you see this? Okay. Over here in between. You can see there is some dirt here. There's not a whole lot. I might need to use a foaming cleaner. I might need to go find even some bathroom cleaner, something that's gonna foam, not too powerful, and flush these things out. I'm gonna get the vacuum on here first, get the shop vac. You need a super small crevice tool to get in there, and I've got my brushes from my, from my um, refrigerator. I can't even see in there, it's so tight. But what I might need to do is get the refrigerator coil brushes in there very gently while I'm running the shop vac at the same time, kind of like the dentist. You know, they do the cleaning in your teeth, and they're running the suction. That's basically what I'm gonna to try to do here uh, first. And you can see there is some debris here. It's gonna make some kind of a difference. Be very careful not to bend these fins. All right, so I've got, I've got the vacuum. I've got these coil cleaners for refrigerators and I'm gonna be very gentle. I'm gonna vacuum everything I can and I'm gonna use these like at the dentist and go in there with, with the suction running and hopefully vacuum up anything that's caught in there. So here's what it looks like after cleaning. It, it is better. It takes a while to pull all of the gunk out of these fins. And it's, it's very hard to get a straight angle. You can on top here where we saw all that stuff. But here I can't even get my coil brush. Let me show you. If I take my refrigerator coil brush and try to get it in there, it's so tight it really doesn't want to go in. I'm afraid I'm going to damage the whole thing. So I can't even use a coil brush. I think I'm gonna try to source some chemical coil cleaner for like HVAC coils and stuff and just try to let that penetrate and drain itself out. Maybe that'll improve things. I'll, I'll keep vacuuming. I'll vacuum maybe one more time just to make sure I get everything else out. But you can see it's a lot cleaner than it was, at least on top. But this is only a small, oops. I think the light went out. This is only, there it is. This is only a small part of the radiator and a small part, and there's two of them, as you can see, top and bottom. So we're only getting a very small area by doing it mechanically like this. All right, I am just back from the store now. I'm setting up a time lapse, so you'll be able to see what it looks like with me spraying this foam coil cleaner in here. I'm gonna spray foam coil cleaner in it. That's all I can source right now. Uh, and basically do uh, coat after coat of letting it soak in and loosen up everything going, going down. Ideally, you wanna spray from behind. We can't, there's no access from behind. We get it from the top down and we're just gonna spray it and spray it, let the chemicals do their thing. By the way, why do you wanna do this? Well, you may notice a couple things. You may notice, actually, this is mine. You may notice that um, 
you're supercharging. When you're supercharging, uh, you start to lose air conditioning. That's one thing, okay? Another thing is you're gonna start to lose performance on your battery, either towing a trailer or uh, going up mountains or stuff that's early because it cannot do all the cooling it's supposed to do. But especially you're gonna get those warnings on the dash saying it's prioritizing your battery pack cooling over your cabin cooling. That should never happen, really. It really should never happen. I'm telling you this. When it does, it means that your, your, your uh, evaporator, not your evaporator, this is your condenser is on the way out. And it is also possible that the metal over time that's on this condenser, this metal here is aluminum, you know, and it loses its ability to transfer heat over time. So it also could be that that's what's going on. You can see how it looks now, you know, over time it will lose that ability to transfer heat. And um, I had a 15 year old car that that made a difference on when the temperature gauge started rising on high, at highway speeds. Uh, but it was only then. Actually, I'm, this, is, this is helping out with this video too. Look at this. The screen in there is uh, it's nice and lit up now. But uh, the oldest Tesla right now is a Model S from 2012, which is only 13 years, no, 11 years old. I doubt it's, it's the metal losing its ability to transfer heat over time. It is just dirty. It is a dirty job, dirty design, hard to clean, can't get access from behind. So let's hit it now with these chemical cleaners and let's see how we do. Let's go. So here's what I was able to pick up at the local Lowe's Home Improvement Center. You can see it's coil cleaner, professional grade foaming solvent. That's what you do, you just spray it on. And remember, access is limited, so get it from the top. Get that top radi right radiator condenser, get in between the two. Also, actually I'm gonna try to get in between the two first. I'm gonna use my light and uh, we'll see. The results. I'm gonna right now. It is Saturday morning. I'm gonna be spraying this <laughs> every few hours. That's why I got all these cans. I'll return them if I don't need them until all the stuff is loosened up and flushes through over the next 24 hours. I, it may take that long. Let's see, it says it removes dirt, debris, dust, and pollen. Oh, by the way, when I was vacuuming, I could you. Could, I don't know if you could tell on the camera, but dust and pollen, man. That really is caking up on these with that airflow from the forced flow from the fans. If you ever heard it go like crazy at superchargers, there's a tremendous amount of air flowing and it all leaves debris, dust, pollen, uh, little bits of dirt. You need this super, super shiny and clean to get maximum efficiency. And hopefully we can get that result here because all the videos I've seen online have not shown this as a way to do it, but I think this is absolutely necessary. Don't forget to shake this stuff well. Really got to shake this stuff. And see, this is the nozzle I've got, so I've got to have to get it in there. We'll see how far it sprays, but I'll start in between the coils first, spraying. <clears throat> and then we'll get the top one after getting the ones in between. Going, I'm getting in between the two here. It seems to be spraying from any angle, which is good. Remember, the only other uh, way to do this is to replace the thing. And we don't, I don't really want to have to replace. Well, hopefully I didn't get stuff all over that phone. This is kind of like your foaming bathroom cleaner, I think. Only hopefully way more powerful. All right, now let's get on the top too. I'm going through a good part of this can. I'll tell you that.
breaking down already. Hopefully it's working. That's what we care about. It's got to keep doing a really good job. It's going to take a long time, as you can tell. Multiple applications, too. Multiple coats. All right, right now I am two cans in. It has, the foaming has stopped. It is starting to dry. I don't know if you can see a difference, but remember, uh, everything worked great for four years. <laughs> so as long as you start with a super clean condenser and radiator, it should last you four years, even though you should probably do this once a year. So that's why I'm taking my time. I'm making sure I'm getting this thing as clean as I possibly can. I've got eight more cans of stuff. I'm gonna let this stuff dry. Let's see if we can take a peek down in here, see what it looks like now. Uh, yeah, there we go. It's looking better, if you ask me. I, uh, it's hard to tell because I'm doing this process of the cleaning, but it does seem cleaner to me. Maybe you'll be able to see something on that time lapse. I'm gonna keep it going through this entire process. I'm gonna come back out here in maybe another hour and uh, put another can in and just keep doing that over and over again. Hopefully it's a better job than anybody else could do. And, you know, it's equivalent to a replacement almost and will last for four years. That's the goal at this point. I am still cleaning. This is the second round. I'm doing two cans per round. And it's, it's, the foam's going down fast and it is draining through. I can see that. Another thing you want to keep in mind is try not to force a vacuum in here. If you don't think you can be comfortable vacuuming everything out, don't do it because you will damage the fins. And if you damage the airflow, it's all about the airflow and getting enough metal to contact with the air and getting that airflow, that's how the thing works. The minute the airflow slows down, even if you're bending fins and damaging things with your vacuum, it's, that's gonna be irreparable. So just keep that in mind. I'm also finding that with the second batch, it just dried, it flowed through so much faster. It could be that there were a lot of obstructions the first time and the foam was just hanging there. And the second time has really gone through fast. I mean, it's almost like I just waited a few minutes and everything's gone. I think you saw that on the, t if you're, well, if watch the time lapse, you'll see what I'm talking about. And uh, I'm gonna put another coat in there now and see how fl fast that thing flows through. And it may be that I'm done. I think that may be a way to tell is how long that foam hangs around. You can see what it looks like in here, a little closer up. And compare that to previous screens or video that are earlier in this video. Interesting, it's only foaming where it's encountering resistance. So I can see it's not really encountering resistance anywhere anymore. It's just going right through. Even here, I need to get some back in there a little further, but that's what I'm noticing now. It's only foaming where it's encountering dirt. No dirt, no foam, no clean. Don't need to clean there. 
I just unleashed an entire can. You can hear it working. We won't know how it's going to do until I put everything back together and run it on a hot day on a supercharger. But so far, it's looking very, very promising. And like I said, I thought this was impossible to clean. So gap here between the two, but this foam spray seems to be what it is, or any kind of sprayer, I guess. Like I was saying before, I might need to get some industrial strength, more powerful cleaners, that coil cleaners that, that use a pressurized mix spray to do it. And I may do that in the future. But for now, this is working. This is, look, it's almost all dry, just right before your eyes. And stop making all that noise too. Another way I can tell what's going on that this is cleaner is that all the foam that keeps popping back up because it goes down and then it pushes back up and expands everywhere is pure white. So it is not really cleaning much at all here. It's not lifting dirt like it was. It was pulling up gray and black in spots before. So it, it's got to be pure white. Just keep it, make sure it's flowing. See how it's dropping? All the foam's dropping through there. There must be some great airflow through here now in these areas where it's doing that. At least I'm hoping. And as I mentioned, I'm not going to know until I plug into a supercharger. But I have high hopes. This is the last can. This is can number 10. Nope, we're, we're basically done. This thing's just about out. And we will take a look at what the coil looks like before button everything up. You can see it's still foaming and draining. Right now I can hear it actively draining, which is awesome. All the way through the system. Here, hitting the floor, going down the floor, and into the floor drain. And here's the final look before I close everything up and put everything back in reverse order. If we can compare this with what it looked like when I first pulled the top off. I don't know if you can, but it does look very clean and everything's been flowing white without picking up any more dirt. So hopefully it'll provide a lot more airflow and work better. Also, please, if you got some value out of this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you don't already. And there's also a like feature in the lower right hand corner below this video where it's playing. It's either a like button or it's three dots and it opens up into the super, actually it's a, it's a, a thanks, sorry. It's, there's a like thing you give a thumbs up to, but there's a super thanks function or it says thanks. Go in there, you can donate any amount of money that you is commensurate with the amount of value you derive from this video. Also, let me know your thoughts or comments about if you've used this technique or other techniques and what it's done for your air conditioning system performance or if you had to replace two compressors like me and they probably would have said the condenser was next and all this other stuff. So I think these systems can last a lot longer than four years without having problems because I didn't have any problems for the first four years. It's only been the last two years. All right, AC's on, it's working. I know it didn't break anything, but I'm not gonna know for sure if it's working until I get to a hot, sunny afternoon day at a supercharger when I am you know, down near 20% and we're doing like 162 kilowatts. That's when I'll know.